Hello YouTube, so we're back with another TFT video. The patch notes just dropped like 10 minutes ago. I watched Mort's patch rundown. I got a good idea of it. So I'm going to try to go over it quickly and we'll talk about which comps might be dead and what might be the shining stars of the next patch in case you want to learn them a little ahead of time. Obviously we can never be 100% right, but judging by what's already good, we could probably take some good guesses. Let's take a quick look at the highlights. Challenges are buffed. So you can see here, the challenger trait is buffed, Fiora is buffed, Kaisa is buffed, which are the two carries of that trait. Possibly four, six challengers might be viable. We'll take a closer look at it in a sec. MF, Darius is buffed, Silco is buffed, Ari is buffed, Sorcerer buffs. Uh, Belveth is just a five cost, that's good. Nasus was also in the challenger comp, so maybe that uh, comp in general is really good. Some augments, Shoujin is buffed. Nerf, Multicaster and TF. I'm just gonna spoil it. That comp is probably dead. They nerfed it on a lot of fronts. Golden Tickets nerfed, Crown Guard, Blue Buff, and Protectors Vow all nerfed as well. Okay, so the big thing we want to talk about is a Challenger buff. So at 2 Challenger, it doesn't change, but it does at 4, 6, and 8. At 4, it's only 5%, but, you know, that's pretty good considering 4 units are getting it. But in, in realist, like realistically, in the old Challenger comp, the only ones that really carried were Kaisa and Fiora. They're getting 5% each if you were to play that exact same comp, not bad. But if you go up to 6, it actually goes up 10% for every champion you get. The problem I think here is a lot of the challenger units are just doggy. So it doesn't make that big a difference, but maybe a challenger spat six challenger comps uh, might go pretty hard. Maybe with a Neela. We'll see. Multicaster is super nerfed, right? So four challenger will do less damage than three challenger does now, right? But you're getting the mana buff than it used to. Um, so overall, multicaster is just the trait itself is much worse. And as we're going to see, a lot of the units got nerfed as well. TF nerfed quite a bit here. Look, 30, 30, 40. Like, it's it's pretty, pretty big. Um, Sona's also getting a damage nerf. So I'm just going to go ahead and say multicast is probably not something you want to look to play. Maybe if you high roll a start, you didn't even need Pandora's items. You found a blue buff and, like, gargoyles. Yeah, maybe you should still go for it. But I would not try to go out of my way to play multicasters next patch. Okay, units tier 3. So if Darius does get a kill, his next cast will, like, his resets will do more damage, which is nice. I don't know if this changes much. I personally don't think Darius is worth playing around. Um, MF, X marks the spot. This is actually a good buff for the Neela comp because you play, when you play Neela and, um, let's just look at it here. When you play Neela plus Sejuani because even though she's not on the comp here, you actually do play MF as a GP item holder. So her doing more damage might help you get to the stronger point quicker. So I do think this is a comp that should be on your uh, radar for next patch, Bilgewater and Neela. Um, that's for sure something I look. Same with Nautilus, also getting buffed. Again, he's a big player in this comp. He's like your primary tank for a lot of it. You put some items on him early. Maybe you move them later, but it's good, even if the way up to that is buffed. So Sona's getting a little bit of nerf as well, but it's only her damage. So one comp I think will be really good next patch is the Azir comp I talked about in my last video, if you haven't seen it. But it essentially revolves around you playing four Shurima, Looks something like this. You play four Shurima, one, two, three, four, and then you play Sona, Fiora, and Jarvan, right? So this is your level seven board. And the reason this comp I think is really good is Azir got a buff in the, in the past, and Sona can infinitely stack Azir's attack speed. Now the damage, Sona's getting a damage nerf as we just saw. I don't think that matters almost at all for this patch. She's pretty much here just to make your Azir 1v9 champion. Yora getting tankier, which we haven't seen in the patch, but it does happen, helps this comp a lot because she is kind of like a stall for this comp. She doesn't need to be the primary carry like she used to be in the challenger comp. She just, the tankier she is, the longer Azir gets to stack up with Sona and just, you know, stack up in general. Um, so yeah, this is a comp I think you should look to play. My last video talked about kind of the ins and outs of things you want to watch out for in this comp and how to kind of build up to it. So yeah, watch out for this Azir, uh, Azir, Nasus, and the Masia comp. I think it'll be very, very good next patch. Maybe it, it's it kind of an expensive board, right? You got four cost, four cost, four cost, four cost at uh, level seven. Not that easy to hit. But if you do see an angle for it, I think it'll be very good. So Tarek's man is getting nerfed. I actually didn't see this in Mort's thing. Maybe it's new. Um, this was a pa this was a comp I actually think is going to be very strong. Um, if you haven't seen, it's called people call it like the Korean Tarek build, where you are you're essentially building sorks across the board. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sor Soraka's not a Sork, but this is fine. Um, so you kind of do something like this. And I actually do think it's better with a Spat, because then you can get rid of one of these Sorks and play Soraka instead. And the idea here is you give Silco 
uh, blue buff Morellos, so he just kind of keeps casting. And a Gunblade, he keeps casting and he's kind of burning everyone. And you give Tarek these exact items, QSS and Double Gargoyles. So this was a build that's kind of popping up. I do think it'll still be good next patch because Silco's getting buffed, Ari's getting buffed, who you'd eventually put in instead of like one of these shitters. Um, again, I think it's better with the spat, then you can drop this, add Soraka. So Tarek's even tankier. Also gives you Invoker. Um, and this comes really good because with these items, Tarek's shield actually scales off his AP, right? And you're giving him six Sorcerer, he has a shit ton of AP, Tarak is buffing him even more. So he's kind of literally just permacasting like 2k health shields. And if you give him this QSS, he won't get kind of disturbed by, you know, uh, Cassante or Nautilus. So kind of the only way this Tarek dies quick is if he gets CC'd right before he was about to cast. So with these exact items, you usually take Pandora's so you can make sure you get these items. This comp is very strong right now. You might even see it on this current patch. I think it'll be even stronger next patch, even though Eric's getting nerfed because a lot of the comps that um, are, well, the multicaster comp, would kind of, it's kind of hard to get to this point because you'll lose so much health to multicasters. It'll be much easier to get to this point. And now that Silco's buffed, Ari's buffed, um, I think this will be a very strong comp. So yeah, I would watch out for it, even though Tarek's mana is getting nerfed a bit. We'll have to see. This one I'm a little unsure of because this mana nerf doesn't matter. It does matter a lot. Sorry. I think the reason this comp is so good is because Tarek's shield becomes so big. He starts getting healed by uh, Soraka and Silco while his shield's up. And then he kind of pops his next shield super, super quick because he has so much armor MR uh, from the double, double gargoyles. His shields are so big. It gives for him forever to heal up again from Silco. I do think it's a big deal that his mana is nerfed because it might just be the difference between him casting another 6 billion health shield or not. And yeah, I would look out for this this comp for sure. But uh, th this one's on a maybe because I do think this nerf matters. Belkaz is getting nerfed, thank God, because he does way too much damage. Again, he's not he's not being really played as a carry in this comp, so it doesn't matter too much. But it just this hurts some ulti casters a lot. Okay, so like I said earlier, uh, Fiora is getting buffed. Her health is getting buffed. She got an armor MR hotfix buff, so she's just way tankier than she used to be. She does 30% damage reduction when she ults. So yeah, she's not this 1v9 drop aggro carry like she used to be, but she's quite tanky. She's quite disruptive. Does pretty good true damage to the front line. So I do think this actually helps the Azir comp I talked about a lot. But with Kaisa also getting buffed in just her raw damage, I do think Challenger might be... We, see, I'm not going to recommend anyone play Challenger. I do think it's a bad comp right now. Let's just take a look at what it looks like. So Kaisa, Fiora together. Do four challengers, kind of how you used to always play it. It's terrible, right? 39%, 9% win rate, average five, awful. Um, the only times these champs right now are good is when they're not being played together, right? Fiora is not bad when you're playing Vertical Demacia, especially the SPAC. Kaisa is not bad when you're playing Void Reroll. But when you play them together, they're not very good. And this was the exact comp we were playing before, right? If you played uh, six challenger, uh, none of them look good so i'm not sure if this buff will make this exact comp better like i said earlier maybe if you get a spat it might make six challenger good right you give the challenger to like a late game belveth neela atrox maybe six challenger is good the big problem i think with challenger in this uh set is when you look at old set like if you guys played 9.0 Callista, the more attack speed she had it increased her damage a lot because the amount of auto she did between her casts or like her, her attack speed directly correlated to her damage, right? Other characters have this all the time where they have an effect like each auto does true damage, like a Yone, or like every three autos they spin. I think Zed did that when he was a duelist. Their attack speed directly correlates to doing more damage because they have some kind of passive or active that had to do with per attack. Now, neither Kaiser or Fiora have this. Having a shit ton of attack speed is great for sure, but it's not like Kaisa's spell will do more damage if she autos a lot. It's not like Fiora like, does more da true damage because of her attack speed they're pretty much using the attack speed as a way to gain mana quickly which is good but it's not the same way like challengers used to carry or duelists so that's kind of one of the big reasons i think um i'm not too sold on these buffs but we'll see I, I keep it on your radar i don't think this exact comp the way we used to play it will be that good but there's a lot of buffs right challenger itself's being buffed fiora's being buffed crisis being buffed nas is being buffed who was played in that comp you never know so the Neela comp I said was really good. One problem is that Sejuani is getting nerfed. I don't think it makes... It, this, this is a pretty big nerf, but I don't think it, it will ruin that comp. I think that's such a... It is such a reliable comp to play around. Neela's, I think, one of the best four costs to play around. She feels nice. Um, this, un, this board can get stronger and stronger the later you go, which is a problem some other boards have. Like, if you were to play six challenger, you can't keep playing six challenger without 
keeping like an Irelia and a Samara on your board, right? Those units are just so useless. Whereas I think this board, because all you really care about is these three units here, the first three, you can make your board so strong later, right? Like as you see here, you just add Aatrox, you add Scion, you add GP, and it's like your board gets strong with very strong units because you're not relying on these kind of like shitters to keep your synergies in, which you would with other comps. Like, you know, when you have to keep like Kales in for um, Demacia, I mean, Demacia Vertical is still good, but you got, you, you know what I mean. Okay. So yeah, Silco's mana is going down. This makes him better with Shojin. Shojin's also getting buffed. I think the buff was only AD. But um, yeah, and his damage is straight up going up. So again, like I said, that Taric Silco comp, I think will be quite good next patch. We're gonna have to double check, as I said. But Ari's also getting buffed, which helps you cap even harder. Even RE1 is getting buffed, which I think is great. RE2 already feels pretty good, and RE2 is getting buffed as well. But RE1 feeling getting buffed is a great feeling because she doesn't feel very good until you upgrade her. Maybe now she'll feel okay. Um, Belveth getting buffed. This doesn't really change any individual comp. Maybe like, you know, the rich man comp if you do hit nine with a million gold. But the Belveth buffs are good. 10 armor MR is a lot for one buff. It's usually when like on the safe side, they'll, they'll keep it to five. 10 will make her super tanky. Her damage is going up 15% AD ratio. Like that's, I think Belveth will be a super good champ. Um, if you do play vertical challengers with a spat, I think challenger Belveth, if you ever get to it, will probably end up being six challenger Belveth with Kaisen Fjord also being buffed, I think will be a great comp. It's just like hard to get to that point, right? And I don't think it'll be strong enough to get you there easy. Something you might have to high roll into. Rise getting buffed. I think invokers are already okay. But um, yeah. Uh, golden ticket nerf to Riftwalk AP is not something I want to theorize either because I'm not too sure how good Cassidy is. Stationary support one is probably one of the best silver augments you can get. It's getting nerfed quite a bit. Pretty much the reason it was so good is just getting a dummy as a silver augment itself is already okay. And then it becomes a really good augment when you get a free, you essentially get a free support item. Now you're getting literally nothing for eight turns and then you'll get the dummy plus the support item. It makes it quite a bit weaker for those eight turns. Just having the dummy uh, was nice. Celicorn's blessing target on attack speed. So this is a comp I think will end up being actually pretty good. Um, I'll talk about it here a little bit. So you essentially play Aphelios, Jinx, You play something like this. At level eight. Now. Your four Bastions, you, you try to keep them up. You know, you want to make them as tanky as possible. Soraka helps keep them up a bit. Silico helps keep them up a bit. You give him a Gunblade, a blue buff. And then Aphelios is kind of your main carry. You give him a Gwinsu's. The reason Jinx is here is she helps both Aphelios and Silco. She gives him Gunner. She gives him Zahn. Um, at level 7, you kind of don't want to play the Silco, I think. He's the easiest one to get rid of, especially if you don't have Silco items. If you have amazing Silco items, then yeah, maybe play him over Soraka. But uh, you want Gunner because this is kind of a stall comp in which Aphelios gets really strong over time. Now, this isn't like the craziest comp now, but it's already pretty good. Uh, let me show you something quick. So uh, Darth Noob or Darth Nub, he hit rank 1 playing Bastion Aphelios. This was, you know, October, uh, a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago. Boom, rank 1 at the time. This is the comp we're talking about, right? You have Aphelios with Gunblade, or sorry, um, Gwinsu's. You can give him a Gunblade if you want. You can give him Giant Slayer, Runon, different items. But the big one you want is a Gwinsu's, a bunch of Bastions. You have Soraka, and sometimes you can fit Silco, but you don't always have to have Silco, right? You notice sometimes he's not in there, sometimes he is. Depends if you hit level eight, easy enough, or if you have good items for him. And that, yeah, the idea is you're essentially stalling for Aphelios to ramp up his AD and his attack speed. He's kind of infinitely ramping up, right? Both of his stats that he cares about because of being a gunner and having a Gwinsu's. Soraka's helping keep everyone up. You have a bunch of Bastions. Pretty good comp. And if Darth Nub could hit rank one last patch, I think it'll be even better on the next patch coming up because you won't lose infinite health to multicasters. Uh, and yeah, the last thing I want to talk about for the patch is essentially playing around Earth. So you might have already been watching or already heard that Earth is just a good um, legend to play around already. There's so many good comps. I think the best ones you want to look for are Demacia is really good. Slayer is really good. Ionia is good. Vanquisher is okay. Uh, Sharima is okay. Bruisers is okay. There's a lot of spats you can get and it just feels nice. You get your direction at 2-1. It feels nice to play around them with these plus ones. So how do you play around Earth? I, I know a lot of people, they, they're not exactly sure how to play around it or what, how to tailor properly. So I'll give you a quick rundown because I do think this will be an even better comp or 
game plan next patch when multicaster is even worse. Um, so the way it works is that when you pop a tome, let's say you have a tome on your bench and you, top, you pop it, it looks at your last round, not the current round, you can't just put in new units and pop it. It looks at the last round of the, the traits you had active, and if you have at least six traits active, it'll give you one guaranteed trait. So the way you want to play around this is you play around units at, at 1-4 before you get your augment. If you took earth, it's usually going to be gold, it's the most likely. Even if it's a prismatic, you take it. And you pop one of them you want champs like cassiopeia aurelia Jin's good um kale's good right uh if you get sona from an orb or talia these are really good because look talia will give you shirima odds you can never get a multicaster spat it doesn't exist so this multicaster counts towards your active or inactive traits for your tome odds but it'll but it's kind of null because you cannot get it so she's giving you shirima odds for free while the multicaster kind of does nothing sona's even better because the is one of the best if you get them uh sona from an orb you can play her at 1-4, uh, it'll give you Demacia odds, and Multicaster does not exist as a spat, right? Some of the most common things you'll play around are Kale, I'll just give you an example. You play Kale, um, Cassio, and Cho'Gath, right? Here we have seven. The only one we don't want is Invoker. Invoker is not a very good plus one. Bruiser plus one is good, very easy to play around. Demacia plus one is probably the best, very easy to play around. You just go vertical and you add a uh, four slayer. Noxus, very good plus one. At seven, you can play seven to Noxus. You don't have to find a Scion. Amazing comp, especially if you can win streak early. Shirima plus one is just easy to play around. It's good. Azir is a good, uh, Azir is just a good carry right now. Slayer, very similar to Demacia. You just want to play vertical Demacia with four slayers. If you got a Slayer spat, you would put it on Fjord later. If you got a Demacia spat, you would play it on Mordkaiser later. But a very similar comp nonetheless. Void plus one, very good. Six Void is just a good comp. Maybe you want to play around Baron. Some people think it's terrible. I think it's okay. Uh, it's probably hard to win out with, but it's a good top four comp. So yeah, no matter what you get, you if you if this was your board at 1-4 and then at 2-1 you take your Tome, you pop it, you're guaranteed to get an easy, good um, trait to play around. Except Invoker. If you get Invoker, uh, you might be unlucky hopefully the other three non tailor ones are something easy to play around but let's say you, you really don't want to play around invoker maybe challengers is good i've been talking about non-stop this patch that they're buffing challengers maybe giving a challenger spat to nila or especially belveth late game could end up being good for six challengers since the traits getting buffed and so are some of the carries look look at this every si assuming challengers is good we don't know yet I, I do think it's something you should keep on your radar but we don't know for sure if this was your board at 1-4 and you popped a tome, you are guaranteed to get a good plus one. All of these are easier to play around. Bruiser, like we talked about, Challenger, you play all the good new units, uh, buffed units, plus, you know, Belveth late game, Nila while you get to her. Demacia, one of the best. Slayer, one of the best. Noxus, one of the best. Void, easy to play around. Boom. You can find these three units. Your tailor is so perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly these three units, right? It could be Irelia. Again, this is assuming Challenger is not completely useless. Uh, Malzahard, as we talked about, Sork plus one is pretty good. Void's easy. Slayer, Demacia, Ionia, Challenger. I don't want to keep going, but you can guarantee yourself a good, a good, easy to play around uh, spat if you're playing around Earth. I think this will be probably one of the best ways to play the game. Again, I don't want to repeat myself, especially if the, the Taric comp and Challenger plus one. I think both of those can use plus ones well. We just have to see how good they are. If they end up being good, then you for sure want to play Earth and try to play something like this to guarantee yourself a good. Uh, plus one trait if you want a better like more in-depth guide on how to use earth and kind of what what the comps look like depending on what you get i can show you you know the best demacia board if you get demacia plus one the best slayer board if you get slayer plus one as i said those two are pretty similar yeah i could do a video on that if it ends up being a very good strategy that's pretty much all i want to talk about for now i hope you guys enjoyed if you learned something i'd appreciate a like comment or subscription stay beautiful my friends let's get some infinite lp this patch